Hi and welcome to my class. Today we are still continuing in finite series. But what you will notice is they are not asking you to calculate s of infinity. Let's look at the following question. For which values of p will the following series converge? Now when they are talking of converge, what they mean is for this series to be infinite, what must the value of p be? Converge is referral to the infinite series. Now, for a series to be infinite, what we must remember is that r must always lie between minus 1 and 1. The very first thing you always write down is that r must be greater than minus 1 and r is smaller than 1. Then you calculate r. In this case, r is term 2, which is 8p squared over term 1, which is 16p, which now simplified gives us 1p over 2. Then applying the rule where r must be greater than minus 1 but smaller than 1. So you put in the restriction. After you put in the restriction, you're going to solve. You solve using your algebraic expressions, algebraic solve for x rules. If I'm solving for p because it's an inequality, I'm going to times by 2, but what I do on one side, I have to do on all, which gives me p must lie between 2 and minus 2. What many pupils don't understand is that the value we are talking about at this level is p. It is not the value of r. If I wanted to calculate r, then I would have to go back and substitute into the first term and second term to actually get r. So the value of p can well exceed minus 1 and 1. When we go back and we substitute, we'll see that r after substitution will lie between minus 1 and 1. Now, let us do a slightly different question. Again, what they're going to ask for is for which values of x will the series converge? Again, when you start, the first thing you write down is your restriction. r must lie between minus 1 and 1. In the metric exam, just for writing that, you are usually allocated one mark. Number two, calculate r. In this case, it is term two over term one. Now by cancellation, we'll see that r is equal to three minus x. Then you're going to put the r into the restriction. So what do we have now? We have 3 minus x. We're substituting it into the r is greater than minus 1 but smaller than 1. Now we need to solve. Now when we're solving, if I take my 3 over I'm going to have minus 1 minus 3 and on this side I'm going to have 1 minus 3. So I now have minus 4 minus x and minus 2. So we have minus x is bigger than minus 4 but smaller than minus 2. But we haven't solved for x. In order to solve for x, we have to divide by a negative. But the rules for inequalities is that as soon as you divide or multiply by a negative, 
the inequality sign changes. So, we now change the inequality signs and we now have that x is bigger than 2 but smaller than 4. Right. When they do this, many a times they have a follow-up question for this kind of question. Right. The follow-up question would say, calculate the value of sum of infinity if x is equal to 2 and a half. In order for the sum to work, we need to see that the conditions are fulfilled. Now it says that x must be greater than 2 but smaller than 4. So when they say x is equal to 2 and a half, then we have fulfilled the condition. Now how do we get r? The number pattern is 3 minus x. The number pattern is 3 minus x plus 3 minus x squared plus 3 minus x cubed. Now we're going to substitute the 2 and a half into x. So the first term we'd have a half So we're going to substitute the 2 and a half into x. So for the first term we have half and for the second term we have a quarter. Now for infinite I don't need the third term. Remember for s of infinity we only need a and we only need r. We now have a which is equal to a half and to get r we're going to say term 2 divided by term 1 which will equal to a half. So we have a quarter divided by a half, which is equal to a half. But do you notice that even though our x was so high, our r was definitely lying between minus 1 and 1. Now substitute all we have. We have a half all over 1 minus a half. So the sum of infinity is equal to 1. Thank you for watching.